Hello, I'm Judy Stiles. Thank you for joining us this week on Newsmakers. Well, the holiday season is one where you hear about increased needs for helping people throughout our community, but those needs exist throughout the year, and today we're focusing and visiting with an organization that is here year-round to help people cross lines of Joplin. Joining me, Kathy Lewis and Ricky Smith. Thank you for both being here today. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, we've talked in the past, and I know you're doing a lot of things, and I think last time we talked, you were getting ready to look at a new facility, and a lot has happened since then, so I thought it'd be a good time to update the public, you know, where we stand and so forth. So I'm sure probably and the number one question people ask you, Kathy, is how's that new building going? <laughs> it's going slow. <laughs> um, we are the latest date we have to move in is April 1st. So um, we just received some extra funding from the city of Joplin through mm -hmm. their CDBGDR, which stands for Community Development Block Grant Disaster Recovery Funding. And with that extra funding, we should be able to finish the building and get moved in and start helping again with what our normal services are. So you've been in kind of this temporary service now for a while. <laughs> right. We, um, we're doing Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. We're at the offices at the station at 20th and Wall area. Mm -hmm. um, and we do our emergency food pantry and our financial assistance from there. And then on Wednesdays, we're using Old Habitat Restore out on Black Cat Road to distribute government food commodities. So the need continues and your services continue, even though you don't have that facility. <laughs> they do, they do. We haven't been distributing any clothing or hygiene or houseware items, but we will um, start that back up when we get moved into our new facility. Right. Well, for background for people, they say, well, what about a new facility? You had to move out of your existing facility because of the renovations of Joe Becker Stadium and the blasters coming to town. Basically had to find a new home. <laughs> That's correct. We had been in that building for over 30 years, meeting the needs in the community. And then the city approached us to purchase our building so that they could use that in the redevelopment of Joe Becker. Mm -hmm. So we found a property. It's at 320 South School Avenue, just around the corner from where we used to be. We've purchased that pro property and we are in the process of renovating that facility now. So you have a, basically you have the building, but you've got to make it functional. Right. Well, it used to be an old Missouri steel building for mm -hmm. folks that have been around long mm -hmm. enough to remember that. Um, and it was, it was a warehouse basically in four quarters and each one was basically a machine shop when we purchased it. And now we are renovating it for um, two different kinds of pantries, uh, new offices for our staff, uh, some really great volunteer um, facilities there. And then of course our shopping area and um, a new feature is gonna be our conference room. We're gonna be able to do some really great training and uh, meetings in there. We'll be doing um, a lot of new things with our kitchen studio that will be in that room as well. So we have a drawing that you have with you, Kathy. We're gonna hold that up. I don't know if the sure. camera can show it. So uh, the facility itself, like I said, it's just literally down the street from where you used to be. So it people will still right be able to find it throughout the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. But the features that were, are going to be in it, uh, more room for your commodity distribu distribution and things that you're doing? Yes, and what will be new in our new facility is the fact that we'll have a client choice pantry, mm -hmm. which means it will be just like a little grocery store and they'll actually take a cart through there and choose what they'd like to, to have for their family. They will have a personal shopper with them that will be one of our volunteers mm -hmm. that will go through and let them know how many of each type of item they can choose and then they'll um, have a more choice that way that they'll make their own choices. So really they can tailor it to their family needs, yes, the size yes. of their family, the age groups and what right. they have to deal with. Less waste that way mm -hmm. and then we know that the food is actually you know going to be consumed because it'll be their choice. And they can then put it mm -hmm. to use. So you have the other facilities and of course the clothing you're not doing now but tell me about how this will be tied into the new facility when you're back in the business of handing out clothes. <laughs> well, we're clothes. continuing to accept donations of clothes, small housewares items. We've actually have a couple of semi-trailers we're storing those things in mm -hmm. to Temporarily, so that when we move into the new facility, we'll be fully stocked for our shopping and our backroom area where we keep those small household items. And um, we'll continue to offer um, clothing to the public to be able to come in and shop in our facility if they qualify by our guidelines. And, um, and we have a lot of people that are really looking forward to that. So that need is out there now, though, yes. even though you don't have the ability to give those clothes out, you still have them stored ready to go. <laughs> we do. They're ready to hang on hangers and, and get put out in our shopping area. Um, but right now we've just been referring uh, the folks that are needing clothing and houseware items to other facilities and the other organizations in the community that can help them while we just don't have those services. Right. Well, you have this temporary position of not being able to provide those right. services <laughs> for them. So you're able to provide continuing services now though with a location that you have for food so people are not going hungry. They still can get those food and the commodities in the community. Right. Um, we are working out of the station, like Ricky said, at mm -hmm. South Joplin Christian Church. And what that is is an old Quonset hut. And it used to be a bunkhouse during the tornado when, mm -hmm. when teams would come in to help us with the reno renovation and reconstruction Recovery. of mm -hmm. the community. And now we use that facility to do 
help with emergency food and with financial assistance. So you have some, your office is there where people can find you in those facilities. Yeah, <laughs> it's been really interesting in that transition. Um, being a bunk house, there mm -hmm. are two large rooms, the sleeping rooms have three stacked high bunk beds. We're actually mm -hmm. using them for pantry shelves. So <laughs> necessity is a mother of invention. So the wooden bunk beds become <laughs> <laughs> we are We are using every bit of the facility we possibly can, and it, it's really worked out um, to be a huge blessing for, for us and for our clients to be able to use that facility. So. Mm -hmm. Now, the item you mentioned on the commodity distribution, explain mm -hmm. how that works, how that differs maybe than the food, you know, that you're, how they tie together, or what's the difference? Well, the commodities are a, a supplement that the government sends to us mm -hmm. each month, and if they qualify, they can automatically pick that food up once a month. Okay. And right now, we're distributing that out of 315 South Black Cat Road, the old Habitat for Humanity Restore, and they can just come in once a month and pick up that food, and it's just whatever the government sends us. Sometimes mm -hmm. there's a lot of items, and sometimes there's just a few, but it's just meant to supplement what the what our consumers sa spend on their food each month. Okay, so there's a set program. There's certain guidelines. There's yep. a lot of mm -hmm. uh, follow, rules to follow. <laughs> there <laughs> are involved with that. Um, from the side of receiving items, I know that you're obviously you're still giving food. You're still receiving a lot of contributions. The churches in the community who are part of Cross Lines continue to support you. They do. We have uh, approximately 60 churches from the Joplin, Carl Junction, and Webb City areas that support us mm -hmm. in many different ways. Some of them just send a team to volunteer with us once a month. Some of them support us financially or do food drives for us. It's whatever the churches are comfortable with as far as supporting us. And then we, in turn, uh, support the community in, in that way. Mm -hmm. This time of year too, we have a lot of businesses that will do food drives mm -hmm. at their at their workplace, and those food items will come in. Also, the little school children um, have their drives, and we we're actually looking forward in the new year to an annual event called Super Bowl of Sharing, mm -hmm. and we have had this event going on in the community here for probably 15, 20 years. Mm -hmm. um, we were very early adopters of that national program. Um, it's an NFL program. We're really looking forward to a successful year this year, too. Well, you mentioned the Super Bowl. A lot of people remember, well, January is the time when they're asking us to bring in soup and crackers and kind mm -hmm. of tie into that theme with soup and the Super Bowl and yes. so forth. Uh -huh. so this a is a really a concerted effort after the first of the year. You feel that that's important because a lot of people say we're going to help at the holidays mm -hmm. and then the first of the year comes and they forget about helping. <laughs> yes, yes. And we have that need all year round. Uh, from the station, we've been helping approximately 15 to 20 families each day with mm -hmm. food. So the need is still there throughout the whole year. So if you're watching this program, it's beyond the holidays. It's still the need to help out and provide help services. Definitely. Still there and mm -hmm. so forth. Another really incredible program we have here locally is Jomo Restaurant Week. Mm. Um, we've run it twice now um, with some of our friends in the community, some of our local restaurants. And folks basically go to the local restaurants that are participating. They bring canned food items and they get some sort of special offer from mm. that restaurant. So it might be a half price item with an entree purchase or it might be an extra dessert or, or whatever the special is. And uh, we had, I don't know, almost 2,000 pounds of food donated when we did this mm. this past fall. Mm -hmm. And so we already have the dates uh, for the new Joma Restaurant Week for the for the winter season is going to be uh, like the last week of January. Okay. So it's coming up pretty quick, too. So a lot of things after the first of the year to look forward yeah. to and activities yeah. and tying these together. Well, when you think about food coming in and food going out, I imagine it takes a lot of volunteers to be able to handle this. I mean, if you were to show up with even just a bag of food, here you are. Somebody's got to put those on the shelf and organize this. Tell me about that behind-the-scenes work that goes on. Well, the volunteers do most of the work at Cross Lines. Um, we have about 33 of our churches that have volunteer teams, mm -hmm. and they come in once a month and volunteer with their team. And actually, some of our teams come each Wednesday and help with the commodities and then have their day that they, sh that they help us at the station. And normally, they can help in the donations room to hang up donations or just do whatever. Right now, they're just uh, sorting the canned food items and helping us stock the shelves and then filling the food orders. What we do is we have our clients fill out a, a client choice uh, form. Mm -hmm. On there we list all the different types of vegetables, fruit, meat that we have. That way we can try and help them with what their needs are and not give them food that their family won't eat. Mm -hmm. So from that the client, uh, the volunteers fill the food orders and then help the the family out to the car with their food. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now you think about canned foods, we think about you know, green beans and things like that. A lot of, what are some of the needs that maybe you're not seeing when you have food drives? You, know, you may probably have tons of canned corn and canned green beans. For sure. <laughs> you know, what For are sure. some of the needs that you end up having? We actually, um, we ask people kind of focus on some of the things that we might not have as much of. Mm -hmm. For example, um, fruit, canned fruit mm -hmm. is really, really important to us. Uh, canned meat. Um, some of those bean items that would be good proteins for folks, 
those kind of things are really important for the pantry. So if somebody is watching and they're looking at con contributing those types of things, those types of meals ready type foods that they can use for preparations. Yes, and definitely. Of course, non-perishable. Mm -hmm. So do you work with, uh, you mentioned the churches, working with the churches and the youth doing school food drives mm -hmm. and so forth. What's the process from, you know, somebody has this food drive at school to getting that from the kids gathering it in the classroom and having a mountain of food to getting it to you? You know, how do you work all that? Just kind of depends on how much there is. Um, we've had schools um, bring the food to us mm -hmm. and we then we weigh all of that food so we let them know how much their food drive brought in and so they mm -hmm. can kind of goal set and, and work toward a, a bigger collection the next year the next time they do their collections. Um, but basically people can bring that to us or you know we've, we've had things like scouting for food where they're out at a grocery store all day for three days and there are, are boxes the size of pallets for us to go pick up mm -hmm. and so that can be arranged as well. So they just contact you to work out mm -hmm. how to coordinate that. For, yes. sure. Mm -hmm. for sure. We have a box truck that we received um, a grant from the city mm -hmm. I think back in 2009 and so the guys will that work in the pantry can take that box truck out, pick up those donations, bring it back to cross lines and then the volunteers help us uh, put it on the shelf so we can get it out to those who are in need. So that's the important part is getting it ready for those who can need. Yes. Well, let's talk about helping the people in need as far as uh, criteria or what the process is for somebody who's in need, you know, coming in to receive those donations and, and services. Well, for our clothing and food, um, we use the uh, poverty standards mm -hmm. and they, that's how they qualify. Okay. Now our financial assistance is a little different uh, because even those that are in the, the middle class uh, occasionally have a, a crisis. Tough times, right. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> so we uh, just take applications and um, look each uh, application over separately and mm -hmm. try and help those that come in. We definitely give preference to those who have small children in their home and those that are in the lower income, but we do uh, try and help anyone who's in need that's having a crisis. So our financial assistance is meant to be for those people who normally pay their bills monthly and are just having some situation that they're needing a little help. So we help mm -hmm. them up and out of that situation so they can then just keep going on with their life. So so somebody who may have a family member in the hospital, they lose that income for a short period of time. Yes. Yeah, and the electric bill still comes. That's right. <laughs> Ty yeah. Tying out those situations. Now, so the application process for a family needing, say, food, they walk in, you have someone then visits with them and fill out the paperwork that's involved? Yes, we have our caseworkers just do an intake with them and mm -hmm. see what the issue is. We try to see if there's some other reason that they're needing uh, food. Mm -hmm. And if so, then if we have those services, we can help them or we can refer them on to other organizations that we work with in the community that can help them with those. <coughs> so networking with other organizations is an important part of what you're working right. on. Right, and I, I think that Joplin did a great job of that post-tornado, but in this community for years and years, our nonprofits have worked together really, really well and that continues. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, as we're kind of displaced right now some of our services we're not able to offer there are organizations in the community that we rely on because you know we know that they've got our back and they can help mm -hmm. take care of our clients when we can't maybe do a few of the things we regularly do right now um, and then they know that if they were ever in a situation <laughs> where they were in transition like we are that, that we would that we'd be there for them too so we just all kind of work together to make sure that we meet the needs of the folks in our community mm. now earlier you mentioned people with families uh, do you find that there may be special food needs for instance for people with children you know you think about even things like baby formula and thing you know the food that maybe kids are more prone to eat versus the senior citizens type of meals you try to t target that and work with that yeah I think for sure you know we we even had little children come into the pantry this morning and there was a, a brother and sister and they were young preschool age mm -hmm. and the little boy is like mommy I'm hungry I'm hungry I'm hungry and we were able to go in the pantry and just find him some already sliced up apples with some peanut butter to dunk it in mm. and you'd have thought we'd brought him a, a three-layer cake <laughs> I mean he was so excited and so grateful um, but you know sometimes we're able to meet that immediate need for that child and mm -hmm. that that's a really sweet thing to be able to do um, but we were able to send home 10 days worth of food for his family, morning, mm. noon, night, and snacks in between. And we know that that kiddo is gonna be fed. And that might give his parents a little bit of breathing room to be able to take care of some other needs that they have. And so that's what we're glad to do. You see a lot of families facing that challenge of, do I buy groceries or do I pay the bills or do I take care of the medical needs? Mm -hmm. We sure do, and, and uh, we do what we can to help in those situations, and what we usually do is help with food, or we mm -hmm. can help with that one-time bill to get them up and out of that situation. And then we have other organizations in the community that we work with that we can refer them on for some other needs. So that once again, networking, working with the other organizations mm -hmm. and working together on that. I mean, have you seen any trends in job, and you've mentioned tornado, post-tornado, are we seeing more need, or are we seeing less need? What type of, any trends? For sure, um, needs have gone up since mm -hmm. tornado time. Uh, 
um, some of the organizations that came in after the tornado have now moved on to other communities in crisis. And so um, some of those things are falling back to the organizations who've been here a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. um, and then in our transition, we've had a, a really astounding um, need come to us. People that we've never served before are coming to us faster than than we expected. Hmm. Um, people who've never been to cross lines for services are now coming for either the government food commodities or the emergency food pantry. And so some of the folks that we used to see on a regular basis because we were in the neighborhood, we might not see as often. Mm -hmm. but we have all of these new clients that we're able to help. And so when we get back into the new facility, we're hoping that we'll, we'll bring back all those folks that we were able to serve before if there's something that we could do for them, but then also retain these new folks and make sure that they've got the support that they need. So are these new poop, new people facing challenges they didn't face in the past, mm -hmm. or is it just they never came to ask for help before? I think it's a little of both. Um, a lot of them we're not even seeing in the charity tracker system. Mm. And what that is is an encrypted, password-protected uh, network that uh, cross lines as well as about 60 other organizations, churches, agencies in the Joplin area are on. And we can, in real time, um, put in that system that what we've helped people with or right. their needs and then that way if they go on to the next organization so you just go kinda, door to door to door getting right mm -hmm. we don't see as much as of that now and so what we do at cross lines is we have we try to work with the same families and try and help them up and out of their situation mm -hmm. and then that way uh, some of the other organizations in town can help different families because there's only so many resources in the Joplin area in the Joplin metro area right. and so if we're all helping the same families um, then some of those people will fall through the cracks so we really like that charity tracker network mm -hmm. it helps us to band together and help people um, like say somebody comes in with a large utility bill and we can only pay a portion well we can then call on one of the other agencies or organizations to help us pay that bill and get those people back up mm -hmm. on their okay. feet mm -hmm. but then for regular services we have a lot of our clients are a lot of uh, single parents that work and a lot of the elderly and so we can help them with that monthly uh, ass assistance that can just keep them going. Mm -hmm. And you know we think about the children and the families but the elderly is another aspect mm -hmm. of Very when you think about poverty I imagine are you seeing a lot of the elderly facing those situations we having do. social security and other challenges not paying the bills? We do because they're on fixed incomes. Mm -hmm. A lot of them um, they are on their social security some of them have small pensions some of them don't but that just really isn't enough for them to make it each month and we're glad to be there to help those folks. Same mm -hmm. with the single moms you know mm -hmm. we have a lot of them come in they have one or two jobs and they just need a little help you know mm -hmm. a lot income's of not cutting it for them right. to be able to cover those needs and so forth. So you have a lot of individual stories I'm sure then as people come in everybody's a different case <laughs> yeah it is um, right after we well right before we moved out of the old building uh, we had a woman come in young woman maybe mid-20s mm -hmm. and she, we had uh, the volunteers had packed up her grocery cart and it was full it was an abundance especially for someone in her situation in particular and she was kind of looking through the tops of the bags and she found a baker potato you know the kind you get with a really good steak mm -hmm. at the steakhouse and she was just so grateful for a potato. And it, it, it's, minutes, it's moments like that, that that really bring home to us that um, we are so blessed to do what we do with the resources that are provided that, that aren't ours. Mm -hmm. um, they, are, they are the communities and, and, and they are truly a blessing to us. But for us to be able to give this young woman a potato and for her to be so grateful for it, um, something so simple, you know, those, those are moments that are really, really rewarding for us. We have a lot of college students also that we help each month with food because mm. we like to help those people that are helping themselves, you know, to get, get a better, better life. life. Yes, mm. so we, we try to do that as well. Mm -hmm. So the way to help them stretch those bills that yes. they're facing and be able to make it. You mentioned potato. Do you get, a lot, do you get much fresh produce and things like that to be able to distribute? We do. We are really fortunate um, through the Feeding America Network, which is a national um, organization of food banks across the country and our Ozarks Food Harvest um, connections. We're able to bring into the pantry a lot of fresh produce mm -hmm. from many of the different grocery stores in town. Um, we also get some fresh baked things from some local restaurants and uh, we're, we're really really fortunate that way and we also have a master gardeners garden at the facility mm -hmm. which is something we're really looking forward to in mm -hmm. and the new facility is that we've been working with the master gardeners for a long time and they they do bring a lot of fresh produce through our doors for our clients and as we get into this new facility 
It'll be a it'll be a planning session for a while, mm -hmm. but then um, that new garden will be up and running, and I think it'll be a really really rewarding experience, not only for our master gardeners and cross lines, but really beneficial for our clients as well. So you have enough land at the new facility to have mm -hmm. crops grown, basically, we <laughs> to grow things. We do. We have three acres, and north of the building, there's a huge garden area. They've already got the uh, greenhouse up, mm. and we're really hoping to partner with the uh, master gardeners group to even have an education piece when it comes to gardening and mm -hmm. canning and anything that might help people s be sustainable on their own. And so they have their own yard, they can learn how to plant their mm -hmm. own green beans or tomatoes to help right. their family out. And things e and even container gardening mm -hmm. or raised beds where oh, you okay. can have a lot more produce just coming from a smaller area than just mm -hmm. having a big garden. So we're really looking forward to uh, partnering with the gardeners group in helping with that as well. And you mentioned education. It sounds like education is something that you're shooting for more in the future, the goals to be able to have more than just here's something, but we want to help learn, help teach and so forth. One of the great features of the new building is going to be a, a a conference room. It'll be pretty large. Mm -hmm. um, it will also have a kitchen studio, so we'll be able to teach those cooking and canning classes right in the studio. Um, we're looking at all kinds of other healthy hobbies. Um, we, we've had people mention that they'd like to do some uh, needlework, a uh, crochet, or knitting, that kind of thing. Um, some folks are talking about bringing back some sewing classes that they've had at the in the past, and, mm -hmm. and we'll now have the facility to be able to do that again. So there are lots of things that are going to be coming our way that um, we'll be looking for some grant funding for, we'll be looking for community support for. So if there are organizations out there like, hey, we'd like to partner with you to sponsor a class, um, those are kind of the conversations we're going to be having through the spring to be prepared prepared for next summer and fall. Right. Mm -hmm. So are you looking for people to volunteer with that aspect as mm -hmm. well? If somebody has a special s cooking skill or aspect of it, something they can share with you? Over the last year, we've done some reorganization of our board, and we now have a group called Friends of Cross Lines, mm -hmm. and that group meets every other month. Um, and and those folks are coming together to do some of that planning now. Okay. We've got a, a donor appreciation team, and we've got a volunteer appreciation team, and we've got an education committee that we'll be forming to kind of figure out what we want those classes to look like, how we want the schedule to work. Um, and then, of course, our board is always guiding what we do at Crosslines, and we, we appreciate them a lot. Um, one of the things that they'd like to see us do uh, eventually is hopefully have some evening hours so that we'll be able to be open for mm -hmm. the working poor who would be able to have then access to our facility um, and the resources that they need. Because they can't get there during the daytime, they're right. at work. Right, right. <laughs> Tying that together. Well, do you hear from your mm -hmm. clients the, the needs for things? For instance, food, uh, a lot of people, maybe young, I use younger generation broadly, but not having the skills to know how to cook certain foods. You know, you give me a can of beans, what do I do with them? You know, or, you know. Most definitely, I think we just are all cooking less and less. We have busy lives and so do our clients. So mm -hmm. we would like to be able to help them with those cooking uh, classes and just uh, canning and freezing and you know we even when we get our government food commodities the food bank will send us recipes that mm. we try and send home with because mm -hmm. uh, in December we're going to be getting leg of lamb. Oh wow. I don't even I know how to like 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 leg of lamb. <laughs> so they're sending us recipes that we can send home with our clients and mm -hmm. we're, they're also getting a great big bag of raisins so it tells them how to make cookies and do all kinds of things with raisins. Mm -hmm. Yeah so we're trying to help them help themselves more and that's really why we'd like to be here for the clients that are actually capable of maybe um, we, we, what we'd love to see is that they become donors mm -hmm. instead of receivers. Right. But then we also, Jesus told us that the poor will always be with us, so that's another reason we're there for is those people that we know that just are going to need that little help each month. And carry on with them and mm -hmm. bettering. And if you get, hand someone a bag of raisins, or what am I going to do with these? Mm -hmm. If you give them the raisins and the recipes, they can say, oh, okay, I yeah. thought about that. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> so the government commodities, you really don't know month to month what's coming in. We don't. We get a, we probably a month and a half uh, ahead of time, the food bank will tell us what we're getting. and then and a couple of weeks before, they'll tell us how many cases of each item that we'll get. Mm -hmm. And it, I think it's just, it has to do with the, the farm bill and just how they declare take things care a surplus or whatever. <laughs> Yeah, so then we find out what the, what we're getting, and then they also send us those recipes so that we can help the, the folks that we give that food to know, know how to use it. Great, great. Well, as people are watching, if they have you know any questions, I know you have a website that, mm -hmm. I don't know if we've shown it yet, but the website that gives information, but we you know remind people, of, I guess, of where your current location is. If they need to want to come by and drop things off, here's your website, but you have some basic print information there. Yes, absolutely, and this information is there too. We're actually located at 20th and Wall Streets. There's mm -hmm. a large parking lot on the northwest corner. And folks will park there and then come across the alleyway to the small dome metal building called the station. There's a big red sign. It is the Quonset Hut on the south side of South Joplin Christian Church. We're there Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, 10 to 2. Okay. And then government food commodities were out at the old Habitat Restore building on Black Cat Road. 
and for those not necessarily needing service but wanting to contribute, well, how mm -hmm. should they call you? What's the best way to reach you if they say, hey, that's an idea, maybe they, we should have a food drive? Yeah, they for sure could call us, and we'd be happy to take those um, calls. And then they could also, um, if they do a small drive and they'd like to drop things off, or if they have donations from their household, they could just bring those to the station, um, 10 to 2, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Good. Well, I know that you faced some challenges in the last year with your new location, the transition, and so forth. Uh, obviously, it's something you have a lot of supporters, and you are continuing to strive for the future. Kathy, what, what do you say is your goal as you look ahead in 2016? Well, get into the new building <laughs> <laughs> and uh, just not being homeless anymore <laughs> um, and start with those uh, services that will help people to help themselves a little more mm -hmm. and just get settled so that we can get back to helping with what we've ha helped with in the past. So a new normalcy. Yes. <laughs> trying that together. Ricky, you have, it sounds like you have a lot of ideas. People help you with ideas, suggestions mm -hmm. of trying new things in the community as well. Yeah, we're really fortunate. The community support that we have is just amazing. Uh, we have people come to us and say, hey, how can I help? And sometimes that's, uh, oh, I went to make a presentation at a church and a man said, um, I have an acre of land and I've plowed it and I need to get with your master gardener so I can put in a garden to benefit the pantry. And we're just amazed when things like this happen. Mm -hmm. But new programs like that, Jomo Restaurant Week, and the continuing programs like Super Bowl, and all of those things throughout the year that really, um, each time it's such a, a blessing to our, our ministry and to our clients. And so we really appreciate that community support. Kind of a final thought. We've been talking about the program, but the people side, the clients. And you, you, know, you shared a story earlier about a family and reaction. But what is it like to see people who benefit from your program? Wow. <laughs> You don't want us to cry on camera, do you? <laughs> <laughs> it is just very rewarding to be able to help those who are really in need. And you can just tell when they come in their countenance that they're down and they mm -hmm. really don't want to be there. But those are really the people that we're there to help, you know, is those that just are just needing that little help uh, for just a little short time. And we could just tell you stories upon stories of, of those who really are in need. And we just uh, are glad to be there. We're glad to have the community and the church support that we have so that we're able to help them. So really, you're affecting and helping people in our community. It's a people-based business, I guess, if we were to say it. very it. much and is. And tying mm -hmm. that together. Well, I'd like to thank both of you for spending some time today, sharing with us some, some information. And I'm looking forward to following up in April or so as you maybe have a op grand opening of your new facility and see how things are going from there. Great. We'll make sure and send you an invitation so you can come and, and see what it's all about. Okay. <laughs> we can update the viewers and they can see maybe tour it as well <laughs> with okay. us. All right. Well, thank you very much for Thanks. being thank here Thank you. Today. You're welcome. And I'd like to thank you for joining us this week on Newsmakers. I'm Judy Stiles. I hope to see you next time at the same time on this station. We'll see you then.